In this next section, let's explore creating plan and profile sheets. I'm going to move to a blank file to create these. Um, I'm only doing that to keep our confusion down a little bit since we've already created some plan and some double plans in that other file. I'm just going to move to a separate file here and create my plan and profiles here. Uh, as I've said a couple of times, you're pretty flexible here. You could create all this in one file if you wanted, or you can spread it out and create it in different files as I'm doing here. That's kind of your choice. Whatever works best for your project and dividing up the data for the project members on your team. So creating plan and profile sheets is going to be very similar to what we've done so far with just a couple extra steps for the profile portion. So first we'll go to our drawing production tool. We'll lay out our plan sheets. So we'll go to our name boundaries, plan sheets, and tell it what our layout's going to be. We've set up one in the workspace already for the plan portion of plan and profile sheets. So we'll lay that out, we'll select our geometry, beginning station, ending station, verify the scales where we want it. That scale looks reasonable. We'll go ahead and do a 50 scale for our plan and profile sheets here. So we'll select that. Let's go ahead and rename our sheet here to just plan one again instead of the D plan we were using in the last section. Now the biggest thing that I, I need to do at this point is I need to not create the drawings. So I'm going to turn that off right now because I do not want to create my drawings yet. The reason that I don't want to create my drawings is because I still need to define the name boundaries for the profile because I want my ultimate sheets to have both a plan and a profile in there. So I'll turn off my create drawings option and go ahead and accept these to let it create the name boundaries. So I now have name boundaries in the plan area. Next, I need to go back and define my name boundaries in the profile area. In order to do that, I need to see my profile. So I'll open up a new view for the profile for this geometry. I've already got it set up to display here, but if you didn't, you could just click on your profile here, tell it to dis or your horizontal geometry, and tell it to display the vertical geometry in this window. We'll go to our name boundary tool, put it into the profile mode, and go through the same process that we've been using. Select our drawing seed. Again, we've defined multiple different profiles for you here. We're going to use the plan and profile sheet here first in the profile method. So this is kind of matching the annotation we just did on the plan side. Same scales, we'll pick our geometry that we want to follow. Now we do have a choice. Now we need to define how the station limits of these profile sheets are going to be defined. If we were creating simple profile sheets, standalone kind of profile sheets, we may want to define our own station limits. So we could calculate the beginnings and the ends of the sheets and the lengths of the sheets as we go. I don't though. What I really want to do is I want to change my method over to from plan group and then I want to identify the plan group as this name boundary group that I've already created. And what that does is it forces the profile sheets to begin and end at the exact same locations as the plan sheets. So the two are coincident with one another. There are other options we can adjust on our profiles if we needed to adjust our clearances. Probably the most common one that you're going to adjust is your vertical exaggeration. So currently I'm at a vertical exaggeration of 5, and you can see the white boundary here shows how much of that profile will be visible in that size of sheet based on the parameters that are currently set up. If I wanted to change my exaggeration to another value, such as 10, you'll see that those sheet sizes adjust. If I do change my profile exaggeration too far, let's say I put it up to 30, Notice that the software will automatically shift where necessary to keep the profile in a viewable space. That shifting can happen wherever it's needed. At, um, if you want to set it to that, you can force it to not shift. Or, as I've got it in this case, I can force it to shift only at datum stations. And I've defined those datums to be every 50 feet. 
So all of that is supported. I'm going to go back and just set my vertical exaggeration to 10. That looks fine for what I want to lay out today. And we'll go ahead and create those name boundaries. Now let's take a look at our name boundary manager and let's see what we've gotten created here. So we do have data under our plan group and our profile group. So we've gone in and we've created name boundaries under both. If we look at our profile first, you see the three profile sheets we created. If I expand out the plan view, you see the three plan sheets we created, but you also see a notation that it knows it's been linked to a profile group. Remember, we told it to associate those two together. So it knows that it's located or linked to this group and that it's the group London Road, which is this group here. We can process our plan and profile sheets by right clicking on there and telling it we want to create our plan and profile drawings. Notice that you can also create plan and profile alternating drawings. So plan on one sheet, profile on the next. So we'll go ahead and create plan and profile drawings and let that process. Once those sheets are complete, it'll display in our view and we can see that we'll have plan over profile sheets. Go ahead and close the name boundary manager so we can see that better. And there are our plan and profile sheets. Now the annotation in the profile happened as we processed that. Works very much like the cross sections. So if we go back and we look at the annotation to this sheet, so this particular sheet, plan three, would have profile three showing up on it. So here's this profile. If we look at the reference information, I turn off that reference, you can see just the geometry itself, both and the existing ground, are coming out of the reference. Everything else that we see here is coming from the annotation. So the reason that we got a grid here and that we got some existing and proposed elevations down here and that the geometry was annotated in a certain manner with vertical uh, points of curvature labeled here, the PI labeled, the grades labeled. All of that is because of how we had our annotation definition set up. And that's flexible. You could choose to set yours up in a different manner. Let's take a look at creating a different set of plan and profile sheets using some different settings. Now, in this example, I'm going to go ahead and move over to a metric data set and use some of the uh, tabular annotations that we've got set up in the workspace there. So I'm selecting a, a different file to go place these into. It is part of our metric workspace instead of the imperial. I'm going to lay out the plan view portion of this. So I will lay out our plan view. Now I'm going to create this a little bit different. I'm actually going to create alternating plan and profile sheets this time as well as use some tabular annotations for the profile portion of it. So I'm going to just lay out plan sheets here using our basic plan layout. We'll pick the alignment that we want to use, run this uh, from beginning to end. Uh, we'll create four sheets here at a 500 scale that looks uh, acceptable to what I want to lay out. So we'll accept that. And now we'll go in and lay out the profile version of this. So we'll expand our profile window, display it if we need to, put it into profile mode, and I'm going to select our frame annotation, drawing seed. Remember, this is just calling a different uh, annotation group behind the scenes when we process this. That's all that's happening here to create frame annotation versus gridded annotation or any other type of layout that you may want. I'll select the alignment that I want to base this on. I'm still going to tie that to my plan group that I just created here. So I'll lay all that out. Um, the exaggerations, that probably works out about right for my sheet. So let's go ahead and leave it that way, the way the exaggeration is laid out. I have those in here now. If we go to our name boundary, boundary manager, expand out the groups that we've got. We see we still have our plan view group, the four plan sheets. We've got a profile group with the four sheets or name boundaries laid out. And then we've got the link between the two. So we'll go ahead and process these. But this time I'm going to create alternating plan and profile drawings. The reason I'm doing this is just to give me a little more space for the plan and for the profile portions of the drawing. 
So we'll pick that. It's going to go through and process the sheets just like it did before. Do the annotations on all the profile portions of the sheets and bring everything together. Here's our final profile sheet displayed. Um, we can see that we've annotated this quite differently this time. We've brought in um, a grid still up at the top where our profile area is, but down at the bottom we've included some frame annotations. So we're labeling stations, proposed elevations, existing elevations, deltas, horizontal curve diagrams are located in here, vertical curve diagrams are located in here. So I can see the stations of those curves, the directions of the curves, etc. All of this definition, just like everything else we've looked at so far, is all very customizable within your environment. Now here we've laid out alternating plan and profiles. So if we look at plan sheet one, there's the plan portion of it. We could move over to profile sheet one then. There's the profile that goes along with that, including the frame annotation. And we move on to plan sheet two. So all of that data has now been created and laid out on those sheets. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.